Right, in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do a medium skin fade on straight Asian hair. We're gonna take the skin right up to about here, and I'm gonna show you how to do that in about 30 minutes. So I'm gonna start this timer, starting at zero. We're gonna keep that going. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna debulk. Though it's not too necessary in this case because it hasn't been a long time since his, his last haircut. But what I like to do is debulk first, so that way I can see what I'm doing when I start making my lines. These are my gamma clippers, and I'm gonna take about number three guard, slap that on there, and that's gonna do the first step. Bulking right now, and it's taking off a little bit, and I'm not going in to the shape of his head. I'm going straight up, and that's going to make all this hair nice and even. Uh, I'm not wasting my time with anything down here, right? Because that's all coming off with the next step. So I'm just basically going about this halfway up. I'm clearing that with the three. Everything below that, I'm not touching it. That's just going to be a waste of time. So we did a three there. I'm going to take my Andes. Uh, Super ZR clippers with a 5-0 blade on there. Switching from my comb to my brush. Since this is a mid fade, I'm gonna take the, the skin line right up to about here where this peak is, drop it a little bit in the back, and do the same thing on the other side. You could make a hard line like this. Some barbers like to do this. I don't like to do that, but if you do do that, I would go back and I would just scoop up a little bit, just in that spot, just to make that line a little bit softer. When we use that shaver, the closer this hair is, the easier it's gonna glide through this hair. So this is why I like using this, because it's equivalent to like using a trimmer, but it's got a wider blade than a trimmer. So this doesn't have to be like a perfect, clean line, you know, like, as long as it's even on both sides, by the time we're done fading this, you're not even gonna be able to tell if it's not like perfectly straight. What we want is like that it's even on both sides. So. Next step, I'm gonna take these Andes shavers. And so that first step took me about four minutes. So I'm gonna take, I'm gonna start with the, the one coil. So when I'm using this, I'll have a little bit more pressure down here. But as I get closer to this line, I'm starting to use lighter and lighter pressure. And I don't wanna go all the way to that line right here. I wanna stop just below it. When I, if I accidentally make a hard line like this, then I can erase it by tapping down like that, or I can use the corners just like I would with the trimmers or the clippers. Now this is a shaver, so you don't want to go crazy with the pressure. You want to use enough to get the job done, but not too much, because you'll irritate their skin. If there's even one hole in the foil too that's not supposed to be there, you want to change that out, otherwise you'll start cutting the client. If you're finding that this step is taking you a long time, it's probably either because your shaver is really old and the blade is dull, or you just didn't take that hair down short enough, so it's taking longer. All right, a little less than seven minutes. So this is my whole skin fade process, ready? It's create a line, fade down. So I create a line, erase the first line by fading down. That's my whole, my whole process. I'm gonna create my next guide. Now me personally, I need about at least an inch, maybe three quarters of an inch to get from this to a number one. So I'm, I'm being careful to go up at least three quarters of an inch. If you don't have enough room, you're gonna constantly be cutting into your guide and that fade's gonna keep going higher and higher. And you're gonna wonder why these lines are so hard to erase. A lot of the times it's just because you didn't give yourself enough room in this step right here. Right, so now the next step, I'm gonna go with the number one, create my next guideline. I don't have to go as high now, since I don't need as much room. So I'm only going up about a quarter to half an inch in this step. Just doing the same thing, keeping the blade flat. And notice how I'm standing in one spot and I'm turning him. There's no reason for me to walk all the way around the chair. They usually have the best lighting in one spot. So I did that with the lever open. Now I'm gonna go one notch open, because if I close it all the way, it's gonna hit the guard, since these are zero gap. So this is one notch open. My whole system is create a line, create another line, erase the first line by fading down. Okay, okay. The reason I'm able to like go so fast is because I gave myself plenty of room. Like if you're not giving yourself a lot of room, then you have to be very careful and go a lot slower when you do this. I'm already done with that step, and I'm gonna put the half guard on there. Whenever it starts to get hard to see the lines, then I'm gonna start using the corners only. So that's what I'm gonna do here. I'm starting to do the detailing stuff. That's when I'm gonna start using my mirror, 
start using the corners a lot more. But right now I'm just starting, I'm trying to get like 80, 90% of the cut done so I can spend most of the time that I have left in the detail. All right, next step, I'm gonna grab the tube. We are trying to blend it into the top. It's not gonna fully blend it. I'm gonna need to use some clip rope or comb. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going in. I'm going just straight up. All right, so that was the two. I'm gonna go in now with the one and a half. So I got it one notch open. I got my finger on it because I don't want it to come off. I'm putting the one back on. I'm gonna open it up. Just going in with the corners now because I don't want to create a whole new line by using the whole blade. So you want to listen to it. If the clipper doesn't make any noise, that means you're not doing anything. Just wasting your time. And if, it's, if you're in a spot here that like isn't coming out, then just move on. You know, like you do everything you can while that guard is on there. We are going to take the half guard now. And I'm just going to keep playing with the leather back and forth until we get it all blended. If, even if you go too high on accident, like you're not in danger of like making a whole new line and basically changing the way the haircut looks. So if you're working in tight spaces or it's hard to see that line or you're in this detail part of the haircut, using the corners can really help you save a lot of time and prevent mistakes. And this, could, this can be helpful for you if you're having trouble with a haircut, you know, and, and it's just not coming out. Like, just move on to the next step. Just think about how you're gonna address that later while you're doing the next step. You know, it's kind of like how you're taking a test in school, and they're like, if you don't know the answer, just move on. It might come back to you later. It's kind of the same thing, the same approach that I use. So I use clipper over comb as a debulking technique. I don't like it personally for uh, blending. So I use clipper over comb to get that hair out of the way, and I follow it up with a guard to smooth it out. Uh, well. Start with a quarter inch. I always like to start here in the front, but I don't pull the hair forward when I cut because when you cut it here, if you pull it back, it's going to be too short. Instead of pulling it where it grows from, like they teach you in school, I'm going to actually over direct it a little bit. And then when I cut it, it should be longer than the rest because of the way the head's shaped. If we cut it here, when it comes back here, it's actually going to be shorter. <laughs> know that there's probably going to be little like wavy points and that's usually happens from when you cut past your, your second knuckle or when you um, are just taking two big sections there can be like little waves on the top of the head but the way you fix that is just by cross-checking all right so I cut it from front to back got my first pass done now I'm gonna step to the side and I'm gonna hold it straight up and I'm gonna look for any bumps and just make it straight What I'm going to do is uh, about the safest technique that I know of. I'm going to take one of these taper combs right here. This is not a replacement for knowing how to fade. But if you're looking to blend without removing bulk, you can use these. The, the nice thing about this is it allows you to change length on the go. So if you want to cut shorter, you use this side. If you want longer, you use this side. This with uh, with scissors too. You can go in and point cut like that. This is just one technique of many that you could use to erase these lines. I'm gonna go back in with a tooth and just help soften it up even more. Actually, during in this part of the haircut where it's really not taking off a lot, you really want to just try to listen to the clippers. It helps to have clippers that are quieter. These are the magnetic motors, so they're not as loud. All right, so that was a one and a half. This is a one. Start lever open. And that's why, you know, if you're cutting hair, you know, it's important to use different angles. That's basically what the mirror does. What do you think? I love it. <laughs> okay, awesome. I just see a tiny little bump right here. So usually when you fade the sides into the top and then you cut the top, there's almost always going to be something here that you have to tie in. That's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to go in with my three and just smooth out this bump that's left behind. At 29, yeah, right? Pretty much. Done with the haircut, and that's it.